You've heard how the Zero Project has grown over the last few years. And now we have our Tokyo office. Can you believe it? We have somebody in Japan. So a round of applause, please, to Amelie, who is our Tokyo correspondent for the Zero Project. Round of applause, please, for Amelie. Good morning, everyone. So thank you so much, Bart. I think this is the best previous speaker I could have wished for. So thank you so much. Um, so Caroline already mentioned, I'm so Amelie Saupe, and I'm from the Zero Project since two years. I'm uh, living in Tokyo, where I'm. One thing I'm doing is uh, trying to broaden our network in the Asia-Pacific region and to do some more networking in Japan itself. So after me, I'm happy to have Shinji here also. So that's my friend from Japan. He will be, because I've been asked during the past days whether I will give a good insight now about the Japan situation, but I believe um, Shinji will be a better speaker to do that. So. What I am doing now is to present to you the Zero Project Social Indicators. During the past two days you have met and you heard many representatives from innovative policies and innovative practices, but the Zero Project has a third pillar and this is what we call the Social Indicators. So what do we mean with that? Basically, what we do is sending out questionnaires to experts globally, asking about different topics regarding the UNCRPD. With the input we get, we create like a map where we can get insights, what's the situation like regarding certain topics in specific regions. So th something we are not doing and what's not our objective is to penalize countries for their maybe not so well implementation in certain topics and not praising others for doing well. But the idea is to just to show what the situation looks like. So this year it was the first time we approached only umbrella organizations. This is a great step, I believe, because this gives us a um, first a broader network but also in future, if we have more, hopefully, umbrella organizations to participate, to get insights also from different um, persons, groups of persons with disabilities, different disabilities, which gives us a new uh, basis for analyzing certain aspects of the implementation in specific regions. So I'm talking about the regions because that's what we did this year for the first time, because some of the experts we reached out, so for some countries we only maybe received uh, feedback from one expert, so it's a bit, we don't feel right to say this expert knows exactly, so we don't want to do it like on a country basis, but we put together the replies from experts of a region. So this, the details you will find in the report, so I don't want to go too much into detail, just to give you a short idea what the social indicators mean. So also here it's just to show you we have had great participation this year of 121 countries and, and we as every year we hope to increase for the next years to reach even more. But more interesting, so the, resu the results. In the report and also the website of the Zero Project, you will find all the results. So I don't want to too much go into detail with this because sometimes it's also scary for people maybe who are more into the work about numbers and everything. But that's something I also want to invite everyone to make use of our research because it's not only about uh, statistics and numbers, but we, we find really valuable and interesting 
um, insights because the experts don't only say how the situation looks like, let's say, in regards to the data availability of young persons with disabilities in the labor market, but also why this is the case. So maybe why it's so well or why not. So I believe also for other countries and experts from other countries and all of you, the findings can be really a valuable basis for doing advocacy and to, to get an idea of what other countries do and what could be a good solution. So as you can see here, one of the big findings is, and I'm sure you all know from your own work, is that data availability uh, across the topic, so it's not only regarding employment, but also uh, other other topics. It's very, um, yeah, not so not so much available. So this is something we found out during the past years and every year again. So there's a huge, um, yeah, something we all need to work on to uh, do this better in future. But something else. So as I mentioned before, there's some issues which we received from different experts throughout the um, questionnaire. So for example, I just want to point out that uh, we heard also during the past two days many times that even though there might be a legal framework in place, um, this does not mean necessarily that there it, it's working and it's being implemented. So uh, the lack of monitoring and the lack of um, enforcement, that's something which has been mentioned many times. So what I would like to invite everyone is to have a look at our research and don't get scared because it might look very technical, but to have a look, is there something which could be um, applicable to your own situation, to your country, to your topic, and see what other countries do, because also there's many good practices. And as we heard during the past days also, it's not something we need to do all the time to reinvent the wheel, but there are so many great examples out there already. So um, I, this is, I only listed some here, but you will find my presentation on the website. And f further right, you'll find also the web links, so I didn't uh, point them out here, but this is only to give you a little overview that there is great things out there in the world, and I believe it would be a wonderful first step to see how others are doing and, and maybe connecting and getting into dialogue to see what we can learn. So this is in a nutshell what the social indicators of Zero Project is about. And where you will find the data is in the report, which you all got. And also the almanac last night, you got this, the big green book. So in there, which is something I think is really interesting also is we have this like since 2013 now, we have some questions which we ask every year. So we have a long time database ready. So this gives us a great basis to see what's going on, how things are developing or not. So you find in the two reports, in the annex, many lists and numbers, and also on the website. So currently it's only the employment related indicators, but we are going to extend the website, so you will find all the data there to do further research. And of course, you can get in touch with me, and I'm happy to to learn your th ideas and what you think. And also, I would take this opportunity to thank very much the umbrella organizations, which helped us a lot during this year's research, which was DPI, as they already did during the past years, but also this year for the first time, the World Blind Union was a great supporter and the Federation of the Deaf and the European Association for Service Providers. So thank you so much and yeah, have a wonderful third day of the conference. I want to do all those statistics. Thank you very, very much. It's brilliant to have you. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about marketing and design. And we are delighted to have here with us today, Shinjin, is that right? Apologies. Sudo from the People's Design Institute of Japan. And you're going to speak to us a bit about marketing, I believe. I hope. I hope. You hope. OK, go for it. Oh, we've got the two. We can sing. OK. Big round of applause. Sorry, that was me just talking away to myself. 
I'm fine. Yeah. Thank you, Caroline. Well, good morning, everybody. So I'm a friend of Amelie in Tokyo. So I'm a chairperson of a non-profit organization named People Design Institute. I established uh, the, this philosophy named People Design. It is a philosophy and the methods of barrier-free in each mind creatively. It was a starting point to have a son. I have a three sons. The second son, the age 21 on this year, he births with uh, disabilities. At the moment, I found the many barrier in each mind in a society. If we put in barrier very closer to stigma in each mind creatively, this is a closer way to make a new world for diversity, named inclusion. So our one, I bring the one message for our promotions of my organization. I let see to you. Could you play the slideshow? With uh, music? Yeah, this is Tokyo Pop Style. Enjoy. Yeah, the name of the Super Welfare Expo, we organizing. Yeah, we have uh, this event in the center of Tokyo, the Shibuya district. Collaborate with uh, construction companies. They give us a wall. Collaborate with the railway company. They give the space to putting posters on. The inner city, many places, many posters of this event on the wall and the train. Well, I was born in the 60s. Our future was like that analog, you know, like a Superman, you know, monorail, the spaceship. However, watch this. This is wheelchair. The designed from dress, the created by Yamaha, and this is uh, the center of wheel is uh, percussions, the sales is uh, speakers, enjoy the music, ride electric wheelchair. Well, this is made in Taiwan. The first three, no good color that we put on them, yeah, like this, so typical welfare, the put the graphics on that and let's go to the tour in the city like a segway tour so we organized many fashionable people with electric wheelchair to the city like a segway tour and collaborate with uh, the high fashion shop put on this such like a skateboard enjoy after skateboard snowboard to switch to the, this electric mobility this is our attitude. So the some stores, famous stores around the fashion, collaborate with us. And let's enjoy automatic transfer system in a park. If you use the wheelchair, if you have no legs, no problem, right on. And automatically we can bring with a golf such like a golf cart with a design conscious. We have a message to the ordinary people in front of Shibuya, the center of Shibuya, the make uh, speak talk sessions with discussion such like this. Let's go to the outside in the city. We made some professionals from designs. This is oldest Suzuki's electric chair. We hired an artist. Graphic on all the chairs, that's it. You see? Dramatically change, old and new, negative to positive, with art. This is one of our attitude. Hey, let's go to the city, this car, yeah. And then the next one, this true story. Maybe somebody knows. The Paolo, he is Italian. He lost the function under the body. And uh, he hired the animator of uh, Marvel Graphics. You know, the 
like uh, the hero, you know, the lost function under the bottom. However, the transform, the change that the fight the victims like that. So we collaborate with them. The Mercedes collaborate with them. He was engineer. He buy the Segway and change his own electric wheelchair named Jenny. So we operated with uh, the, G uh, the Segway Japan and then the, the let the enjoyable to ordinary people in you know, a fabulous Jenny functions and the lighting feelings in the city. That this is a point of us. Well, the, this is a model with uh, the Mercedes. So amazing. Looks nice. Yeah, the, he is a Paolo. A nice guy. And then he collaborated with uh, the Hollywood, the Superman and Batman. So, how do you think this is wheelchair again? The, this wheelchair in the movie, the Batman vs. Superman as well. The, the operated by the, the cell phone devices automatically by the girlfriend. Yeah, the, this is uh, the many uh, the Paralympians, athletes inter interested in our attitude because it is without barrier, without stigmatics around this. When we think about, for example, artificial leg or arm, we use art again. Put the art as a screen to aspect to welfare industry. We presentation named Future 3D Taylor. Yeah, look this. Do you know this? Drawing, painting, via 3D printer, it is easy to make artificial arm about 36 hours. The, the many famous designer and the creator draws the artificial arm and legs concept and collaborate with uh, the, the Stratasys, it's a 3D printing company in the United States. And then, the functionally, the center pillar uh, created by the professionals of uh, the artificial leg. And then the, the put uh, the, uh, the object the after printing 3D printer, put on and off. Change your legs like a glass of your face. Not hide, show it up to the others as a fashion. Yeah, this is an artificial arm uh, the, uh, the established by the Japanese uh, the technologies designers. And he lost uh, the arm of the top. And the function is uh, the sensor to the, the motion of uh, the muscle that changes the motion automatically. The, his genius point is uh, released for free of his plan. Yeah, the next uh, the trial uh, named the Super Sports Shop. So we create the new sports and the amusement from some problems around the disability. This wheelchair has a record on the wheel. So the DJ wheelchair, like this and with a light up. And this is a virtual, the VR system, like a Dragon Ball. It looks like this, the, you know, not gear around the wheelchair for us as an entertainment. So the many sports concept from solution around the disability. Well, one of these, touchable bookstore. So many established uh, the, uh, the book company asked for us, the, please Shinji, please make a new dot word book. No, our attitude is book ball, small ball pool. Many figures are like animals of the dinosaur's toy under the ball. Fastly touchable by your hand. Shoulder to shoulder, both ordinary girls with disabled guests, basically blind person, touchable.
Look by your hand. This is our attitude. Where the many super designers with high technologies gathering over here, especially focused to the, the Tokyo Olympic Paralympic 2020. And we pick the technologies as uh, the high quality knowledge the gathering over here. The one part of this, we showed it up as uh, the gears. On the other hand, gathering the new wave of people to think about a new welfare for the future, we will would make uh, the symposium as well, like this, in uh, the big center of the city. So the combined together, the every generations, every sectors, the government, company, student, university, high school, and the junior high school, with the government people, we presentation the new approaches for the welfare, not just the social cost. It has a possibility to make a new culture, especially new economic something. Our big sponsor is Alfa Romeo. It's very Japanese. We presentation to the many Japanese car company, Nissan, Toyota, Suzuki. Alfa Romeo supported us for five years. Thank you very much, Alfa Romeo. Well, one of my relatives is uh, the famous designer for the fashion. He pick our concept people design on the fashion, for example. He has a Tokyo collection. The maybe we'll go to the Milano collection, New York collection soon. We arranged the every media situation, the newspaper, radio program, and the TV show. I would be happy so that such like today, this is our very important attitude to make new world without barrier. You see? So, the mainly we, we pick up radio program to make a message to the others because very good broadcasting invisible voice, word, your heart, own wave. I love 60s radio fans. Well, the finally, this is our presentation. Look, on the left hand side of stage, this is a feeling I had the boy with disabled 21 years ago. I was there. And the bottom, many problems around him. Now, the switch, the scope, change the mind on stage like this, the Vienna, Tokyo. Wow. From social cost to the economic challenge, it is possible if we put around welfare new sites for the new way without stigmatics, without barrier, named people design. Join together. Let's create the future together. You do? You do. I will do as a one father of disabled son. Thank you very much. Uh, Sinjin, that is brilliant. It is absolutely fantastic. And I think the idea of fashion and design and creativity or creative design-led thinking is so important, but also the passion to which you presented it. It's contagious. So thank you so much. A big round of applause. That was fantastic. Get this all going. Get this all going. Okay, so we have another little uh, surprise, which is actually around the creative and understanding imagery and the importance of imagery and identity. So I want to introduce very quickly, it's just a small, uh, it's just a small conversation between myself and Joshua Goldstein, who has a project or an idea um, around photography. So, Joshua, will you come up here? Because he just asked, could he present this yesterday evening? And Michael really wanted him to talk to you a little bit about this. And he's looking to have conversation 
with anybody over the next day, just over, because we're just here for one more day, about this particular project or initiative that he has come up with. And very much around how disability is understood and disability in work is understood is the imagery around it. And when we say the word disability, what does that put into people's minds? And over the years, disability has been photographed in various different forms. And I think what we haven't seen is disability in work. And Joshua, I want to just you to tell everybody about this particular idea that you have for a particular program or a project to reframe how we are looking at disability in work. Yes, thank you very much, Caroline. This is, uh, I think, an exciting opportunity uh, that the genesis of which started for me a couple of years ago at the Skoll World Forum when I met a very a famous MacArthur Award-winning photographer, Susan Mizellis, who was part of the Magnum Photo Agency, which was founded in 1947 and is the stable of some of the greatest photographers in the world. Uh, as somebody who worked in microfinance and including people with disabilities, I was constantly frustrated by the fact that the story was not being told about uh, people with disabilities entering the workplace. And Susan w uh, really liked the idea and over the last couple of years has been kicking it around with her colleague Francesca Sears in London. And, and really due to the Zero Conference, they really got this thing going and mailed to my hotel a fully drawn up project proposal uh, around called Dis Disabling the Barriers. And the idea would be to take uh, take 12 people with disabilities from self-employment, like in microfinance, to working uh, an autistic uh, person working for a corporate and doing a kind of day in the life. And their notion is 12 photo essays profiling persons with disabilities around the world with one of the world's great photographers working with the person with disability over three to five days of shooting. Um, and I saw you this is a great, uh, we were talking about marketing and storytelling, and I, they have the experience of having done a number of great projects, one for the Global Fund around AIDS, and according to the scientists who were involved with this, the photo essay, the digital uh, presentations, the book tour, the book, allowed them to raise about a billion dollars. Now, whether that's entirely accurate or not, I mean, that's an estimate. I do think this could really help our fundraising because the story is not there. We heard from the Ruderman Foundation about the need for storytelling. I think this is a really great opportunity and I would welcome the discussion. So I'm just kind of playing the role as a point person because I'm passionate about disability rights and would love to identify some people who could be corporate sponsors. Obviously, this takes some money, but not a huge amount of money. Um, I think we'll have plenty of opportunity to identify great people with disabilities around the world to, to be subjects of this project, but we need to get it off the ground. So I think it's an enormously exciting uh, opportunity. And Magnum is known for doing photo, photo photography with social value, and they have chosen us as the next iteration of one of the works. They've done things on migrants, etc. So books, digital, website, tours, you, you name it. Uh, and so I think it's exciting. So Caroline, your thoughts. Well, no. Because you've had some history with them too. I did, actually. Just to, just to say this is a very, very important time for a program or a project like this. Actually, they did raise a billion, by the way, in the Global Fund. Because Magnum, for those of you who don't know Magnum, so a lot of the really iconic images that we will have seen in our newspapers or in uh, galleries are Magnum. Magnum photographers are the premium and best photographers in the world. And so a lot of the imagery that forms our thinking has come from Magnum photographers. I suggest that you go on and have a look at Magnum photography just online onto their website. But really, if you have any ideas about if you would like to be part we wanted the subject matter. If you have ideas about companies that would like to do, please come to Joshua, because our time is right now. Well, I'm all about move, creating a movement, so we need imagery, we need design, we need creativity, we need to frame the issue of disability differently in the mindsets of everybody else outside this room. So I do really welcome this project. I do encourage you to come and talk to Joshua, 
because all of our thinking will help you get this off the ground. Isn't that right? That's, that's absolutely right, Carolyn. And uh, I have here in my hand the project proposal. I'd love to share that with you. We can all, it's also available online. Uh, you can also reach out to me if it's not convenient today, this morning. I'm certainly here through the morning at jgoldstein498 at gmail.com, but you can find that uh, in the, the program, the list of speakers, et cetera. Uh, Caroline also knows a lot about this, but I, I think the time really is, is now to try to launch this while they're excited and there's momentum. So I think it's great, and I very much thank Zero Conference, because it really is, they're seeing now this movement and momentum, and let's, let's jump on this, I think. Okay. Uh, to tell the story. So, Caroline, thank you so no, much for the thank time. Thank you very much. You're fantastic. And I'm, I really do say this, Magnum is a, pre I mean, this is a premium organization and they approached Joshua with this idea. We should not let this opportunity drop. This is, this is a game changer. So please get in touch with Joshua. So thank you very much, Joshua, for having the vision to begin the conversation with Magnum.